Oh, but she's all alone now on the couch and now she woke up in the middle of the night. Ooh, girl, there's something spooky about to happen. What's up, Rat Fam? I'm back again with another scary Ask Reddit thread. And today we are going to go explore some of the scariest, most unexplainable, paranormal perhaps, events people have claimed to have happened to them in their real lives. Oh, y'all, it's gonna get spooky up in here, so let's get to it. <laughs> I'm already sweating from how scared I'm gonna be. I live in Denmark at the edge of one of our larger cities. The apartments here are for students only, and a lot of people live quite closely together in this area. However, you don't see many students except for at the bar after midnight. So a friend of mine lives here as well, just on the other side of the parking lot, next to which there is a small playground. Oh no, mm, what are they gonna see in that playground? I'm mm, not here for it. It's gonna be a little kid ghost, isn't it? My friend and I like watching horror movies. I was at his place. We'd been watching quite a few movies this night and it was getting quite late. I think it was around 3 a.m. Oh, the witching hour. Mm -mm. Okay, this is like the perfect recipe for some paranormal-ish happening. And I was going to go home and go to bed, which would have been the smart thing to do. Or actually not, probably just staying in that apartment and just like sleeping it off there. To add to the following, I'd never been too comfortable in darkness and watching horror movies doesn't necessarily help. Furthermore, for some reason, there is quite often some issues with some of the lamp posts here so that some areas will be completely unlit. So they had to walk in pitch black darkness to get back to their apartment. But what's worse, walking back to your apartment through the courtyard in complete uniform darkness so you know your eyes could like adjust to it so I think you'd see better or walking and then there's like maybe one or two lamps that are like flickering on and off and then as you walk under it it goes off. Now I'm walking home like I said around 3 a.m. and naturally the light is out at the parking lot next to the playground area. Oh no. Not a problem. I'm not super excited about it but I'm not completely uncomfortable about crossing the area either. I get about halfway across before I start noticing a squeaking noise coming from the playground. If it's not a windy night, y'all, I think at that moment I wouldn't even look. I would just bolt my butt home. Mm, yeah, literally, I'd be so far gone. It wouldn't matter if I started hearing squeaking, you know? I turn to examine the origin and on the playground, on one of the swings, appears to be a little girl. I could tell he or she had long hair, but it was very dark, so hard to see in detail. And they were swinging eerily back and forth completely in the dark, completely alone. I'm not a religious person, but at this point, I think, um, you know, I would start reciting whatever prayer came to my mind. Because why would a kid be there in the middle of the night by themselves, being all creepy on a playground? Yeah, no, mm, I'm gonna like run home. But then of course, like once I got home, I think I'd probably try to like maybe call the building manager or I don't know, try to call somebody that maybe could go check it out. If that is a kid, they should not be out alone in the middle of the night, in the darkness, by themselves at 3 a.m. That, that's dangerous. So I feel like I would want to help the kid, but I'd also want to get very, very far away from the kid in case it's a little creepy, you know what I'm saying? Because if they're just swinging in the dark, that's, that's unsettling. I went straight home and called up my friend whose place I had just left and I called them on Skype and I told him what I just saw. He had a window overlooking that playground and was of course intrigued. So he left the computer for a second to have a glance outside. He returned half a minute later to inform me that the playground was completely deserted. You know, I guess if you want to be optimistic, you could think maybe the kid got spooked that they saw some stranger walking by them, so they went home. I would like to think that, but no, my mind would straight up go to, oh, did I just see a ghost or a demon or something? Yeah, mm, it's too many scary movies, you know? I would not walk by this playground at 3 a.m. probably ever again alone. My husband and I were on a road trip coming back to Louisiana from Iowa. We would drive in four hour shifts while the other person slept in the back of the car. Lo and behold, it was 3 a.m., our favorite hour, our favorite time of night here on this channel, cause spooky things. And he woke me up to start my shift. I looked around and didn't see another car in sight or even a street light or a building. He decided to take an alternate route that he thought would be faster. They were in complete and utter like desolation, like all by themselves, nobody around. A lot of spooky things could happen. Has your husband never seen a horror movie? Movie? This sounds like the start of a horror movie. Don't ever take the alternate route. Not in the middle of the night. You can take the alternate scenic route during the day, you know? Never at night. Never last minute without talking to someone. This is how you get lost. This is how you end up in like the boondocks with like the hills have eyes type situation. Finally, we come across a small local gas station with a single light on. Again? 
this is literally the setup of a horror movie. It was closed, of course, and our car was the only one there. We pull over and as I'm getting out to open the car door so we can switch places, my husband tells me to hold on. I look up from behind the back of the gas station, a man wearing rags was shambling towards us quickly. Not quite running, which made it even scarier because it was in a zombie-esque way. I told my husband to hurry and drive away. He was intrigued though, so of course he didn't listen. He just stared ahead as the guy got closer and closer to us. I started freaking out and screaming for him to go until he finally listened and did. Yeah, I'd literally probably be screaming. Especially if you just woke up, I'm sure you're gonna be even more on edge than like normal, so like you wouldn't really be thinking of helping somebody, and it's not like he's calling out for help. As he drove away, I looked behind us until the gas station disappeared. As far as I could see, this man, I don't know why it's in quotes, followed the car at the same odd pace he was walking at until I could no longer see him. It still gives me the chills thinking about it. Oh girl, it gives me the chills too. I guess like the situation would be ter very terrifying. You know nowhere where this person come from. There's no car. He's in rags. That part of the story, him being in rags, makes me think he needs help. Like, was he on a hike or a camping trip and something bad happened to him and that's why he doesn't have a car and maybe he can't talk because he's so dehydrated and like he was screaming. You know what I mean? I would personally like call the cops for like a welfare check because obviously something can't quite be right with this person. Maybe they're intoxicated or under the influence of some drugs or maybe needs help. Uh, I mean, it's very creepy that he followed your car, but like also really sad at the idea he might need help. Now onto the last Reddit comment we were going to read today, and I didn't say it earlier, but if you're new here, hi, hello, my name is Kaylina. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you join the rap band by subscribing today. But whenever I do these videos or any video that's based off of something on the internet, as always, I will leave a link to this Reddit thread, which has so many more comments down in the video description box. So if you want to go explore this creepy thread, you can certainly go do that. But this is the last one we are going to read in this video, and it is quite long and apparently quite terrifying. It was my first semester of college and I was in a relationship with one of my best friends from high school. I used to spend the night over at his house a lot, which his mom was not too fond of, but I did anyways. Let's call him Manny. Well, one night I'm at his house and he wakes up around four in the morning, which hey, can still be considered the witching hour depending on which source you get it from. I'm not very happy as I hate being woken up, but he asked me to lay down on his sofa on the other side of the room so his mom wouldn't see me if she happened to open the door because she leaves for work about 4.30 in the morning. I immediately move to the sofa and fall back asleep, but wake up not too long afterwards because it was so darn uncomfortable. I try to reach for my phone so I can use a flashlight to get around and find my glasses, but it's dark and I can't find them. Oh, but she's all alone now on the couch and now she woke up in the middle of the night. Ooh girl, there's something spooky about to happen. I look at the alarm clock on the desk and it's about 5.30 in the morning. Now this is when things get weird. I look up and I see my boyfriend at the time laying awake on the bed. He was laying on his back and playing with his phone. Even though it was dark, I could tell because he had his glasses on and the light from his phone was shining on his face, reflecting off his glasses. That's very specific, why? Manny, can I come back to bed now? He leans up a little bit, looks at me, lays back down, and looks back at his phone without saying a word to me. Oh, okay, that's weird. Why? That's weird. Manny, this really isn't comfortable. Can you please check to see if your mom left? He leans up a little, looks at me again, then lays back down and looks back at his phone without saying another word again. I'm just getting my butt up and going back. I don't care. Forget you. It's 5.30 in the morning. You're not answering me. You're being weird. I'm just gonna come back to bed, you know? Manny, can you please get up? He leans up a little and repeats the exact same thing over again. Okay, this is weird. See an alien? What's happening? Are you stuck in like a glitch? When I find my glasses, I'm going over there and I'm gonna kick your butt. I try to search for where I might have kicked my phone and my glasses for a few minutes and have no luck. So I look back up to my boyfriend to ask for help. Manny, can you? I froze. When I look back up, there is no one there. I try not to panic panic a lot and frantically look for my glasses and phone with no luck. I sat by the closet and started to shrivel. My boyfriend comes in a few minutes later and asks me why I'm by the closet. He turns on the light and immediately asks me what's wrong when he saw my face. Manny, you were here a few minutes ago, right? He tells me no, he's been in the kitchen talking and having breakfast with his mom for the past hour. An hour. I beg him not to be joking around with me. After I explained to him what had happened, he said, I wish I could say I was joking, but 
I swear I wasn't in here. That afternoon, he told me about other creepy stuff that happened in his room. I never spent the night there ever again. Oh, what? I would not go back in that room for even a second. I would get dressed, I'd pack my stuff up, and I would leave and be like, huh, you can stay at my house from now on, or just, you know, this isn't gonna work out. So these creepy things can like happen in his room and he's just okay with it? No. And he didn't tell you beforehand? That's that's a bad boyfriend. You know, like sometimes when you wake up in the middle of the night or like when you first wake up in the morning, like your sense of time isn't accurate. Have you ever woken up and it felt like you just closed your eyes for a second and then you wake back up and it's been like 10 minutes or like an hour later? So you could say maybe something like that happened to her and she wasn't realizing it. Maybe she like dreamt that she was saying the things to him, but really she just like opened her eyes and saw he was on his phone and she fell back asleep. So like you could try to rationally explain it or also say some paranormal ish is happening in this house and you know, just never go back ever again. That is really creepy though. Cause like, what did she see if he wasn't there and the thing wasn't responding to her? Why did it look like him? Or did it not actually look like him because she didn't have her glasses on so she didn't clearly see what she saw. But I think that does it for today's deep dive into the scary Reddit thread. I hope you guys this video and if you did please give it a big thumbs up so I know if you liked it and want to see more scary reddit threads and if you haven't yet seen it yesterday I posted a, another scary deep dive into a different reddit thread so if you want to see scary camping stories uh, right here is the video as well as a link down in the description of this video and until next time keep with the redness and I'll see you tomorrow with another scary reddit thread bye now next time I wake up I'm gonna wonder if that's actually Charlie or if it's a demon cat that's posing to be Charlie Fun. <laughs>